Hey everybody, I am Shannon with Salt and Clay and I am here with the teaching team with Salt and Clay and doing the study week two of In Her Shoes in the Footsteps of Jesus with Four Women of Faith. And if you've been following along with us, you know that last week was our first week and we were talking about Mary of Bethany. Well, this week it's her sister, Martha. And Martha has gotten kind of a bad rap, but we are going to be talking about some things that I think are really going to surprise you and encourage you. And if you want to follow along, you can go over to saltandclay.com and get the downloadable study in her shoes so that you can study along with us. So with that, I want to hand it over to Bethany and you are going to share with us everything that you've been learning about Martha. We can't wait to hear it. Thanks so much, Shannon. Um, so I am really excited about, was really excited to learn about Martha because the little that I did know about her and sermons I had heard on her and whatnot previously, I just felt like I could so identify with that um, being distracted a lot of the time. And as I dove deep into um, the two accounts of her in Luke and in John, um, I really just got a really um, much better picture of her not just as, you know, the woman who was too distracted to, to um, sit at Jesus's feet. There's so much more to her. Um, she is a woman of diligence and of faith. And um, I really was blessed by getting to do this study myself to prepare for this today. So I'm really excited to share with all of you. Um, so I just wanted to start off in the first time we meet Martha, which is in Luke chapter 10. And um, Martha has invited Jesus over to her home for dinner. And of course she's running around preparing a meal and cleaning the house and doing all of the things. And her sister Mary is sitting at Jesus's feet. And um, I just think about that. And I'm thinking to myself, like if Jesus came to my house for dinner, I would probably be doing the same thing. <laughs> Especially if I didn't have this account to like go back to like, okay, maybe I should do something different. I would probably be doing the same thing. I mean, Martha knew who Jesus was. She knew that he was the Christ, that he was the Messiah. And mm -hmm. I can't think of any of us that would invite someone to our home and not want to honor them with a good meal and a clean home and um, just a good time. Um, so what she was doing was not something unusual or crazy. She was doing what she thought was the right thing to do in that moment. Um, she was honoring God in the way that she thought she needed to honor him in that moment. And um, when she complains to Jesus about her sister not helping, Jesus speaks to her. And a lot of the time it's seen you know, as a harsh rebuke, but I read it in a few different translations and I could really see that it's, it wasn't a harsh rebuke. It was more of a, you know, encouragement that, you know, Martha, I encourage you to stop striving in this moment and to just enjoy my presence and um, commending Mary for choosing to do that. Um, so I find that um, we tend to want to do all the good things for God. We want to serve him in every way possible, whether that be in ministry, whether that be in our homes. I know, especially myself as a mom, you wanna do the right things by your children, by your um, husband. Um, and Jesus is inviting us to cease striving in, that, in those moments and to rest in his grace and in his presence. Um, so I think that the biggest lesson in this story for us from Martha is, that there are a lot of good things, but Jesus wants us to choose the best thing. And the best thing in that moment was to be with him. And um, he is saying to Martha that, you know, you don't have anything to prove to me. You don't have to do all of these things to prove that you love me or that um, you are worthy of my attention or affection. And in the same way, sometimes we get into this place. I know myself, especially when it comes to motherhood that like, if I do A, B, C, and D, I know that I'm a good mom and um, I want to do my very best, of course, but God, Jesus is saying to us like, no, you don't need to do anything. I already love you. I want you to work out of a place of grace, of enjoying my presence, of resting at my feet, that all of that time spent in Jesus's presence and 
you know, receiving everything that he has for us, the abundance of his grace, his mercy, his love, his wisdom, all of those things that um, what we do, the good works that we do would be an outpouring of that rather than the reverse where we're trying to, you know, spin our wheels to prove that, um, you know, we are good and we are righteous and that um, God should love us. So that really resonated with me. And I just wanted to read um, Luke chapter 10, uh, verse 41, what Jesus says to Martha. He says, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details, but there is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken away from her. And that just makes me think about, you know, um, that verse in Psalms, I'm not remembering it off the top of my head that says, you know, one thing I ask and this I seek that I would dwell in the house of the Lord, that, that there be one thing that we, um, that we seek and that would be Christ over everything else. And um, that everything that we do would be an outpouring of our relationship with him. And then we can move to the next um, uh, account of Martha in John chapter 11. And here, it's funny because when I read this, I'm thinking to myself, I've never really heard Martha preached on from this perspective. It's usually the first story. And kind of like Shannon says, she gets a bad rap in that story. <laughs> um, and then we see her in this story and it's just amazing her faith. Um, it's amazing the relationship that she has with Jesus, that she's willing to just lay it all out there and um, that Jesus in turn encourages her faith. So I think that in this account, the biggest lesson here for us is how to grieve well and how to suffer well and how to invite God into those really hard moments. So as we know, Jesus took, you know, four days um, to come and Lazarus, Lazarus had been dead for some time. Obviously his sisters are devastated and Martha hears that Jesus is coming and she leaves the house and goes to meet Jesus on the road um, and says to him very much like her sister Mary later, where were you? You know, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But she follows that up by saying, um, but I know that whatever you ask for will happen, that whatever your will is will happen in this moment. And I just find that tension so interesting because a lot of times we feel like in order to have faith, we have to deny our feelings. We have to deny our um, honest gut reactions to things that we are not people of faith if you know we are upset or disappointed or um, even if we go to God and say you know God where are you I don't know what's going on but um, here we see Martha just laying it all out on the table saying you know Jesus where were you she is expressing to him her sorrow her disappointment but she's also expressing to him that like I know who you are and even though I don't understand what is going on right now I know that whatever your will is is the best for me and I know that you can turn this around. So um, she goes on to have a conversation about Jesus regarding the resurrection and she doesn't entirely understand what Jesus is trying to say at first, but in that dialogue comes out such a, an amazing statement of faith. Um, and Jesus says to her, I am the resurrection and the life. And she immediately accepts that. She doesn't question him or argue with him or any of these things she just accepts it Jesus said it so that's what it is and again I just am blown away by her faith like there's so many things on this side of the cross that we know to be true we have his word and we know who God is and there are many times that myself and I'm sure you as well have probably questioned but the main thing is that Martha knew who Jesus was regardless of how she felt in that moment regardless of um, even the feelings that she expressed to him, it didn't negate that she knew who Christ was and she knew that nothing was impossible with him. She knew that she could trust his word and whatever it was that he said, that would be what was going to happen. Um, and I just um, think it's so interesting that this conversation, that God used that conversation, like here we are thousands of years later reading this account and that statement, I am the resurrection and the life, has become 
one of the tenets of our faith. And that is a conversation that he had with Martha. And I think that's so cool that um, she got to be part of that story and has, um, you know, it's given us um, a very clear picture of who God is and what he's capable of. So um, Jesus's response to Martha shows us what happens when we bring our whole selves to God, our pain, our doubts, our faith, no matter how big or small, Martha seeks the Lord and the Lord encourages her faith. And we know that um, God will meet us wherever we are in our situation, whatever is going on, whether it's big, whether it's small, um, we don't have to compare our grief to other people's. We know that, um, that God is, is with us in that. And that if we bring him our whole selves, that he will uh, meet us there and encourage our hearts and remind us of who he is so that we can move forward in faith. So between these two accounts, I'm um, there's so much here, there's so many lessons here, there's so much that I can identify personally with, like I said, just always wanting to do the right things um, at the right times and um, just being reminded that, you know, yes, obviously we need to seek to do good works and good things for Christ, but those things do not, um, define our worth or um, they don't um, prove to God that we are uh, worthy of, of love, that we are to rest in his love and his love is to be, you know, pour out of us in everything that we do and to rest in his love in grief and in sorrow and in disappointment as well. And to know that he will um, encourage our hearts and bolster our faith in those moments. So. I hope that this encouraged you. I hope that it uh, resonated with, with you. Bethany, that you've given us so much to think about. And I often uh, compare this to uh, being uh, only given part of the information on somebody and uh, you miss out on so much about them and how much you have brought that out about Martha. Um, we all have strengths and weaknesses in our Christian life. And um, I think it's great that Martha is, you know, an awesome example. Does anyone have um, anything they noticed about Martha they would like to share that Bethany brought out? I really loved that, Bethany. Um, it's good to get a new glimpse of someone, you know, like you were saying, like we always see um, Martha in this certain light, but um, you said a few things that I really love, but something just at the end um, that bring your whole self to God, right? Um, and I really feel like Martha did do that. She brought her whole self in her serving, in her believing, and, um, and you said something about how, uh, to receive, or I wrote, receive as encouragement, not as rebuke, this invitation, you know, to come to him. Like she was doing what she thought was the best at the time. It was a good thing, but it wasn't the best. He invited her into the best. And I just, um, I feel like what a lesson for us that when we're doing what we think is best, but it's not that when we receive a word from the Lord, and an invitation into that best that we would have soft hearts and um, receive that, you know, not as a rebuke, but as an encouragement. And I just was so um, encouraged by that. That was really good. I was wondering what version you read the statement uh, where he said, my dear Martha, because some, some versions so don't have that. <laughs> are not so gracious. Yes, um, that's the NLT. Uh, oh. NLT. Yeah. That puts a different light on it. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I feel like, isn't that just like the Lord um, when he brings a correction? Mm -hmm. It is, mm -hmm. it is strong, but it's always wrapped in love and mm -hmm. it always draws us back in. You know, I just, I love that about him. Something you said, Bethany, um, when she was uh, cooking and, you know, she was kind of having this attitude um, mm -hmm. about her sister. And I think you had kind of said, paraphrasing, 
when Jesus said to her, um, you have nothing to prove to me. And I just, I struggle with that personally because I'm a, I'm a doer and I, I want, I'm a pleaser. I want to, you know, please the Lord. And I, I want to do all these things, you know, out of love. And, but it's so easy to, to kind of shift it to where um, I then get into this mode of then the doing for the affirmation and, you know, for that. And he has to always remind me, you know, it's, that it's, it's always going to be that I don't have anything to prove to him. He loves that I do these things, but I don't have to be in that place of striving or if I don't do good enough, that he's somehow disappointed with me. So um, I just think that's such a good reminder. I need it so often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally get that. It's like Jesus is saying, you know, it's safe in my presence to be good and it's also safe in my presence to totally screw everything up you know <laughs> it's safe to do either of those things neither of them define your worth or your identity in me and it's just it's just so beautiful and such a great reminder for us especially us strivers <laughs> yeah face love <laughs> yeah yeah i think when and i when i was reading about them i kept thinking because I, I'm a, um, you know, like in your love languages, I'm an acts of acts person. Like that's how I love people. I'm like, that was probably how she was showing love, like was to make dinner and do all this stuff. And that to her was how she expresses her affection for someone. So, but I'm married to someone who is like the quality time. So I'll want to run around and do all these things. And can you just sit with me? And I'm like, Oh, you know, and, and it was a good check for me as someone who shows affection that way. It's like, well, don't you actually just want to hang out, you know, rather than get ready to hang out. And so um, I had, I had a heart for her in that, that she probably thought she was doing, you know, the, the highest expression of love in that moment. And um, yeah, it's a good reminder for me and for a lot of people for sure as well. And I was really intrigued when she meets Jesus after Lazarus has died. When I was studying Mary, that she came and Mary didn't come right away. And I was like, that's interesting to me. And I didn't want to dive into that, you know, too much. But um, I love that you point out that she's diligent because I think that is an example of her diligence, regardless of her disappointment, you know, that Jesus didn't come sooner she comes and she goes to him with her grief and with her disappointment and in her sadness where Mary, I, I, we could dive into why she didn't come right away. I don't know, but, um, I like that, you know, Martha was still coming to him quickly with her disappointment and grief in that situation. Mm -hmm. It seems like, uh, between Mary and Martha, you have, uh, two parts of our Christian life. You have the devotional heart uh, relationship with Jesus and you have the serving that mm -hmm. comes out of that. And it seems like um, by, by studying them like this, where we get to focus on each individually, but then seeing them uh, together, they give you uh, such encouragement. You can find something you relate to in one or if not both. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really think we're basically called to be both of them mm -hmm. in different way. You know, at, at such a time that we're called to act, we should act. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was looking at and writing on Martha, I, I saw her as going to Jesus with an agenda. <laughs> you know, it, it wasn't like, oh, I'm so upset. I can't go anywhere. No, I got to know. And, and she asked him kind of like almost, you know, like, give me what's the deal here? And uh, when, when Jesus talks to her, he talks to her um, because she comes back at him with what she knows about uh, prophecy and about the Messiah. He's talking to her theologically. Mm -hmm. But when Mary comes and falls down and is just destroyed, um, he weeps. Mm -hmm. You know, the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus weeps. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's two different ways Jesus ministered to two different kinds of women. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a heads up too, that he, he knows how to minister to each of us. 
And also when we think about ministering to others, that to, to minister to them as from coming from who they are. And um, she's very encouraging to me. I love how, um, and I, you touched on this, Stephanie, about how she models how to hold both sorrow and faith together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she knew, right, that he's the resurrection in life. She, she knew that. And I just think that's encouraging for us. You know, we may know that, you know, God is for us. We may know that he is our provider. We may know these things, right? We know them intellectually. But then when things start to crumble, you know, I mean, we're, we're human in our flesh. We, we struggle and then we doubt and we're hurt. And, but yet it doesn't negate the fact that we do know these things, but then we're in the middle of the trial. We're in the middle of the hurt, of the pain, and mm -hmm. that you can hold both sorrow mm -hmm. and faith together. And I love that the Lord, his response again, is to reiterate the truth of who he is. You know, mm -hmm. and so many times, this is not how it is. Like when we're in that place of just struggling, he comes in with, you know, I am for you. And just again, to reiterate that. And so I love that it's almost like permission that it's okay when we, when we are in a place of doubt, even though we know intellectually, um, he is all that we need. So I love that you touched on that. Mm -hmm. What about um, something you had mentioned, we touched on the choosing the good over the best. Um, what does that mm. look like in our everyday? I mean, do you guys have any examples in your everyday life of what that could be? Um, I think for me, a lot of times choosing good over best looks like choosing to um, get caught up in, I guess, work that I want to do for other people. So, you know, serving my family before I get, you know, caught up in Christ, pretty much, um, you know, it's easy to wake up in the morning and dive right into your to-do list and to realize at, you know, noon that you haven't even said good morning to Jesus, like you haven't even acknowledged him in any way, shape, or form. Um, and it's hard when you know, a lot of times my alarm clock is my daughter screaming from her room. <laughs> and you don't even have a moment to think you're, you know, stumbling there half asleep. But um, yeah, I'm just learning that getting those, those rhythms in my life, and it doesn't have to look, you know, all polished and shiny with my, you know, hot cup of tea and whatnot to meet with the Lord. But um, it's okay, you know, for the kids to wait 10 minutes for something that they need so that I can meditate on a scripture or so that I can say a quick prayer or whatever the case may be. Um, that's something that I'm slowly learning in this season. And um, it's a daily, you know, reminding myself, okay, how can I choose to rest in God in this moment? Um, and not just be so focused on all the things that I think I should be doing and that if I don't do that something terrible is going to happen because that really is not the case at all um, yeah so yeah. yeah I have a hard time with that too I think one of the things is that I've had to learn that if I do it it's ultimately a blessing to model that to them like I feel like I'm taking away from my family, but really it's giving something to them that maybe I didn't understand growing up or something, you know? So, and it's hard, like you don't want them to feel neglected at the same time because of God. But like, I think it's like, no, like God is calling me to this right now. And that's most important. 
and you are important too. And that's just something I think we always have to be sensitive to because it is hard in different situations. And I was thinking too, like just in, as in the life of a Christian, regardless of what, you know, your home life is like, it can be really easy to get caught up in ministry where you're so busy doing all the things. And I call it, you know, I'll, I'll jokingly call it like the Christian checklist, like this, 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 you know, all the things you're supposed to be doing when you actually don't really actually have time for a relationship with Jesus. And so I think that for me is something I've had to learn the hard way. And it's, it's um, a good reminder just with Martha that those are good things and they're things we're called to do, but just sitting at, you know, with Jesus is the most important thing for sure. I think um, same, same, same things, (laughs) but thinking about the, the best over the good, I feel like this is such a stretching um, place for me. And I really feel like the Lord is working in me in this, um, even just taking marriage as an example um, and trying to grow in love in that relationship and stepping into what I think is good um, or what I think is best and doing that when it's hard, but then hearing the Lord um, speak something into what I think is the best um, and being obedient to what that boy, what he is telling me, um, and then doing that, that's the best. And it's usually way harder (laughs) than what I was doing, right? Like whether it's, you know, making dinner and leaving it in the kitchen and saying dinner's ready. Um, and then hearing the Lord say, no, you serve that dinner. You, you said it before him. Like it's always that what he's saying in the midst of what we think is best. And then being obedient to that, that we find what truly is best, you know, I hope that made sense. Well, I think that you're having your ear tuned to that prompting is, mm-hmm. you know, that's, that is a, um, that is the practice of being in his presence. Mm-hmm. So you are hearing him. And I was thinking about, um, as you ladies were talking, um, you know, in Martha, she was always pouring out right? She was a servant, right? She's pouring out, pouring out, pouring out. And um, I mean, I know you ladies, I know you all pour out and always just servant hearts and your love for the Lord. But I think about our, our buckets, right? Pouring out and the filling and, um, you know, where is our bucket? You know, we can, we need to have it near the spigot so that it will continually be filled, right? So that we can pour out because we are called to pour out but we need that filling every single day and i think that's then we then we have it to give Mm -hmm. right then we then we don't we have the grace for our family then we have to serve you know to hear him and to respond because we're our bucket is near the spigot and it's near him so um i love that i love that I love that so much what you just said, Shannon. Um, just thinking on that, like, yeah, pouring out, pouring out, pouring out. And, you know, that picture of Martha with Jesus and he's speaking into those words, her, those words as she's coming with, like Helen said, kind of like an agenda, like, tell me. Um, and he says, I'm the resurrection and the life. No one comes to the body. like the words. He, she's pouring out so much. And it's like that moment you just see her being refilled, you know? those are the words of life. Like where else can she go? Like to get that, you know? Um, so I just love that picture because she was a woman that poured out, poured out, out. Um, and we see that moment when she believed it, didn't even question it at his words, um, that she was filled up. She was being refilled. He's the living water. Helen, were you going to say something? No, I was just thinking about um, what a multifaceted woman Martha uh, seems to be. Um, I don't know their relative ages, but it seems like she's the older one. Mm -hmm. I kind of picture her that way. It doesn't really tell us. But I do know in some versions, it says Martha's house. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, whether it was hers 
you know, uh, technically or whether everyone knew it as Martha's house because of the kind of hostess she was. Mm -hmm. and, and we're not told of any other home that Jesus spent so much time in. Mm -hmm. So she must have been really good mm -hmm. and made him feel so welcome and comfortable. So you've got to really appreciate when you see that gift of hospitality mm -hmm. and how she shared it and wanted, you know, like Bethany said, the best for Jesus. Mm -hmm. And um, so, but Jesus so knows what her soul needs. Mm -hmm. And and just kind of reminds me that he knows what, what we need too, mm -hmm. whatever we happen to be busy with, mm -hmm. he knows what we need. So, uh, the study, I think, is going to just continually remind us of how he wants to be there for us in whatever area we have need of. Mm -hmm. And um, very rich today, really. Yeah, I was going to just say that too, Helen, that it's been really interesting having this discussion that the richness, because there's things that we've talked about here that I didn't even think about or didn't even see in that in, um, in these accounts and there's just so much for us and it's just um, it's so wonderful all the lessons to be learned from these women and and to see God's heart and his interactions with them so and I you know Shannon and I just really have prayed that for everyone who's watching us today and or any time that we're coming to you on the weekend every Saturday in March that um, these women that we're talking about through these women who are doing the talking will really minister directly to your heart if you're with us today. We, uh, that would be our highest uh, joy to know that that is happening and that's how we prepared and that's how we prayed. Well, ladies, it has been so good. I think it's been said a few times, what rich discussion and it certainly has been. That's what we've been praying for. And so um, I pray that um, I know I am encouraged. I love what we've been learning about these women, especially Martha today. I have a whole new love for her, a whole new perspective on Martha. And I'm just so grateful that you ladies were a part of that kind of illumination today. So thank you for that. And next week, we are going to be diving into Mary the mother of Jesus and Amber is going to be sharing with us. So as you're in your study this week, remember you can go get your download at saltandclay.com and you'll be going through um, the, the questions and the reflection on Martha this week. And then come back here, same time next Saturday, and you can hear all about Mary, the mother of Jesus. So we hope that you will join us. It has been a joy ride with you ladies and so grateful for this opportunity so grateful for you and i look forward to seeing y'all next week so have a great one thank Take you care bye-bye